Now that our authentication app has been completely configured, we can now start building out the authentication feature itself. So we're going to start by creating a user model. You can use any type of model that you want, but the traditional approach is to use a user. So I'm going to generate a user model. So I'll say Rails G model user. It'll have an email and then very importantly, it'll have a password underscore digest. So let's generate this user and this is, they're both going to be string values. So that's the reason why I didn't define any data type there. And we'll take a look at the migration, but all this is going to do is give us two empty columns inside of the database. And then we're going to connect our user model to bcrypt. And that is how we're going to ensure that our passwords are encrypted and also that it gives us two passwords password fields, a regular password field and a password confirmation field. So let's take a look at this migration. So if you open this up, you can see that we have two string columns along with the default timestamps. So this looks like it's everything that we need. Let's generate this. So Rails DB migrate. And now we can customize the actual user model. So let's let this run. Sometimes it takes longer than other times. There we go. And now let's open up the model. Okay, inside of here, we need to use a very special method. It's the has secure password method. So all you have to do is define has secure password just like this. And that is going to tell the user model that that password digest field needs to be encrypted. And we're going to test that out in a second. Let's also add a validation. So we're going to say validates and then uh, let, or actually let's just do validates presence of. So validates presence of email. If you're curious on how I just did that in Vim, you, if you've taken my Vim course, then you can see how you can define certain aliases. I misspell presence quite a bit, so I added it as a autocomplete in my Vim config. And so we're going to validate presence of email. We're also going to validates uniqueness of email. Okay, so now let's test this out. Let's open up the Rails console and user dot create email. And here we'll just say z at dev dot com and then password ASDF ASDF and password confirmation ASDF ASDF close it off and it worked. So if you're curious about this, this is kind of the magic of the password digest and has secure password is that when we define that digest, Rails automatically knows that we want both a password and a password confirmation set of attributes there in the user model. And that's what it did for us. The other thing to note is that the password digest is no longer our ASDF that we gave it, but instead it is this encrypted set of strings. And this is tied directly to whatever the secret key is. So the way that encryption works and bcrypt works is it looks at our secret key. The application you generated has a different secret key than the application that I have. It looks at that secret key. It uses that as a salt. And if you've never heard of a salt, it is a tool that a encryption algorithm uses to ensure or to hopefully ensure that the password or whatever it's encrypting cannot be guessed. And so that's what you're seeing right here. So that means that this is working. We now have a user and and we're good to go. So now that we have a user model, now we can actually connect it and create our controllers. So let's start by doing that. We're going to open up our routes. So let's start by saying config routes. 
and we're going to above our root route we're going to give a call to our sessions so here i'm just going to say resources and then sessions and so this is going to allow us to have access to that we only want to use though for right now the create session so now that we have that let's open or let's create a sessions controller so app controllers sessions controller dot rb and we'll define this so class sessions controller that inherits from if I can type application controller and then inside of here we want to have our create action so this the way this is going to work this is going to be a post request so the whatever the API or the front end app when it hits the API it's going to make a post request here to create and this action is going to run so let's add this in so I'll say user equals user so we're calling our user model and then find by and email and this is where what I'm going to show you might differ slightly for your needs but this is the way that I typically do it is I'm going to say params and then user and then pass in email as a nested value and then we'll talk about what exactly this is doing in a second and then I'll put this all on one line for right now and then I'll move it down and then I'm going to try to authenticate params user and then password and I will also clean up this formatting just so it's easier for you to see I'll put this on a few lines and I'll separate it by method there we go okay so what's going on here if you've never built your own authentication this may look a little weird but what we're doing is we're saying okay we have this user model we're calling it we want to find by email now the params here this is what the front end application is going to send it is going to wrap up a user object and the reason why I said that this might differ for you is because maybe the, you, the way that you set up your front end app maybe you don't wrap up a user object but you just send the email directly I personally like to wrap up the objects just so they're structured like this and so that's why I have it like here and then after we have found that so that's the same as any type of find by query now for the try authenticate this is something directly built in because we define the password digest the system knows and it knows because we said has secure password it has this very helpful authenticate method built in for us so if you're curious on why I wanted to use something like this as opposed to using a gem like device it's because there's actually quite a bit of functionality that rails simply has built in by default that allows you to build your own authentication and so this is one of it one of them so we have the user it finds whatever user it, or it tries to find whatever user is in the system with the email we pass up so this is the same you'll be typing in your username or your email into your react application and then you type the password and so it says okay I got the email I found the user in the database now we're gonna try to run the authenticate method with whatever password got sent up and if it if all of that stuff works then we're going to store them in the user variable so that is all we're doing there now if that is the case so if the user was created I want to communicate with the session I want to set the user ID equal to the user ID that we just found so this is going this is where we get into the cookies is that we are saying okay the user is logged in or the user is successfully authenticated we want to make sure that they now have a cookie on their system so what we do is we communicate with the session and we say I want you to store this user ID and that goes encrypted 
into their client. It goes in their browser, their mobile device, and that's all we need to do in order to implement the cookie. So now I can say render JSON, and then we'll give a status of created, since this was a post request, and then I want to also give something that is a little bit easier to read. This is completely up to you. You don't have to do this, but I like to say logged in true, and then I like to pass back the user as well. So I'm going to pass back the entire user that we had in the database. So if that's all working, then we're going to send back the user. They'll get that. They can show in, say, the React application. They can grab their email and put it up in the top of the nav bar, anything like that. So now that we have that, let's also check to see what happens when the user was not able to log in successfully. Maybe they forgot their email address or their password, or they're trying to hack into the system. For that, we're going to render JSON and say status of 401. So what the 401 code is, is it's the unauthorized code. This is the universal HTTP code that you want to use if a user is not authenticated. And so I, this video has gone on for a little while, and we're not going to test any of this until I show you how to build out and we generate a little React application. That's where we'll do this testing later on. But for right now, the session's all good. In the next couple guides, we're going to build out the registration controller, the registration routes, and then we're also going to add a couple more pretty cool routes that I'm going to show you that allow the front-end application to check to see if a user is logged in on each page load. So every time they go maybe to a new component or they try to access a page or maybe they come back later and we want to check, is this user authenticated on this system? I'll show you how to do all of that. So I'll see you in those guides.